left my my side. It'll be like taking a sun from the sky. My love you give me is equal to tears. My peace, my joy, you are my, my strength. Oh, 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 oh. You're everything to me. Oh, no. The air that I breathe, oh, 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 oh. the sun so lusty, cause you're, you're everything to me, yeah, Shouts out to Monica Child. Um, make sure you guys watch Family Hustle. I do watch Family Hustle. Just because I'm already watching um, Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. It comes on right after that. Um, really, um, I'm enjoying Family Hustle. I really, really am. Um, so glad they're on the second season. I, I enjoy it. Um, it's just, you know, more interesting with more people on there. Um, so I'm definitely, you know, enjoying it. Shouts out to Monica. Um, you know, she's a beast. She's a um, an icon in R&B. And, um, you know, she'll push through what she's going through. Because she always does. She got it. Okay. Okay, so Love and Hip Hop Atlanta. So everybody arrives in Trinidad. Except for Spice and Mimi. Um, they, Spice, they're not there yet. I'll say that. Mimi came later on. Okay. So, um, let me see. Hmm. So, immediately, because this is um, Carly's... Um, where Carly's from, somewhat. I mean, her family's from there. She's originally from Trinidad, but I guess she moved from Trinidad when she was young. Then she, you know, left and went, you know, wherever. But there's still um, a good portion of her family is still in Trinidad. So Carly Red is automatically in charge of the trip, child. So everybody's getting annoyed with Carly Red. Carly Red is on the bus. She's giving out instructions. She's making it seem like it's her trip when it's actually Spice that invited the people there. But since Spice is not there, and since you know this is um, Carly's home turf, then she Carly's home turf, then she decided to go ahead and and, and take over the thing. Um, so, uh, Shekana and, and Tokyo, they're already kind of annoyed with Carly Red, um, which don't take long. Um, Carly Red, she just, you know, she, she has an irritating spirit sometimes about her. I can tell that just from the TV. Um, so yeah. So let me see. So, you know, Tokyo, you know, as a bigger individual, I understand, you know, riding on a plane, uncomfortable plane, it's rough. It really, really is, um, you know, you tight, you're in a confined space for however many hours. Tokyo was just over it. Um, and I have a polycythemia, so my blood is like extra thick. And um, that's like one of my, and I, so, and I have a lot of cramps in my legs, uh, in my thighs. And um, so that's definitely one of my fears is like being um, on a plane and not being... Um, able to get like a seat on the outside so I'm like stuck in like a seat where I have like a window seat and I catch a bad cramp and can't move because like they're passing out snacks or something or you know just because or you're not at the altitude or whatever to where you can walk around the plane yet Ugh. terrible terrible um so yeah so I, as a big individual I understand what Tokyo's coming from in terms of being over it, you know, once you leave off a long plane ride. For sure. Um, okay, so they get down there, you know, they have um, the opportunity to get um, the custom suite. 
uh, Carly reaches for the keys and Toka was just like, I need the keys. My feet hurt, my leg hurt, my arm hurt, everything hurt. I'm tired. And, you know, Rashida, uh, well, Shakana, she brought up the fact that Rashida and Kirk should have the uh, main suite. Um, simply because, you know, they've been so nice and they invited them to the cabin trip, etc., etc. Um, I think that's the fairest thing to do. Uh, what Shakana mentioned. Either that or just, or why can't Spice have the main suite? But, you know, she's not there since she's the one that invited them. So, I guess. First come, first serve, I guess. Um, Rashida and Kurt, they're off there in the room, flirting with each other. And then Jock, he comes um, into the building, into their room, and talking. And he's thinking about proposing to um, Kendra on this Trinidad trip, which I think is not going to work out um, for multiple reasons, darling. Um and so, you know, they was just like, well, good for you, good for you. That'll be wonderful. That'll be great. Um, so, yeah. Okay. So, Rashida goes over to talk to Carly, asks where Mo at. Mo's working. Carly said she wanted to suck on something. I was like, okay. Um, and, uh, you know, they were just, you know, talking. She, she feels like um, Shekinah and Tokyo is ungrateful. In which, I don't really know why she, I don't know what, where in her mind is she going that thinks that, what did, did they do to ever give her that indication that they are un, ungrateful? Like, I don't get that. Like, I was like, Carla, what are you talking about? Like, how are they ungrateful? What they do? Um, I mean, uh, they just got off a long plane ride. Me personally, I don't know how long it takes to get from where I am now or wherever we're leaving out at or I'm leaving out at to get to Trinidad but I imagine it's a pretty long flight like I'll be over it after a long flight too that's just a natural you know thing I thought but you know I mean whatever of course she'll be more excited about it because it's her hometown and etc you know black folks when they have another um when they're associated with another culture when African American people are associated with another culture, sometimes they, you know, oh, I'm this, I'm that, you know, it's very like, let me be proud to be or, you know, to claim something else other than just being, you know, black and, and African American from the U.S., you know, everybody want to be exotic and things, but if you're actually that, no shade, you know, that's great, but I'm just saying, you, you, child, y'all know how we can be, oh, yeah. Oh yeah, oh you're from the oh yeah, well you know I'm this and that too, darling. Uh-huh. So oh, she was just like, child, calm down and let's go eat. Let me see. Um Arc Bar. Don't wanna get to her next. Um yeah, might as well. Okay, so Akbar, um, she's in the studio doing her thing. The song sounded good, whatever song she was working on. Then all of a sudden, here comes Shay Mack. Shay Mack coming, and um, they're back in Atlanta. And Shay Mack coming into the studio with her baby, and was just like, yo, I got to go. My baby dad just got shot up, beat up. And Akbar said the same thing I said. Um, like, wow, look look how the tides done turned. Not that, you know, it's a good thing that he got shot, but... The fact that he done cheated on you and treated you any kind of way. Now you got to be there for him. You see how life works out. Um, and, and she, you know, just don't know what to do. She's still upset. She's still mad. You know, and maybe, um, I don't know if she's that kind of person. But maybe is this is her time to kind of give it to him now that he's down and out and on his sick bed. Now she can really read him down Boots' house. And could she, would she be wrong for doing that? Some say no, some say yes. I bet, you know. I probably wouldn't say nothing then if it was me. Um, but I probably would remind you a little later on, you know. When she start feeling better, you know. I would definitely remind you. I take notes. Uh huh. But I don't think she should get back with him. You know, he gonna try to, a lot of men, when they be down and out, they play that pity party, start hooping and hollering and crying. When they can't do the things they used to do, it hurts their little ego. And so, you know, now all of a sudden they start reminiscing and, oh, I always loved you and I'm sorry I never to do it again. 
And if he's blessed enough to get back well, like 100%, he back out there doing it again. So Shay, don't take him back. Um, Akbar end up uh, watching the little baby girl. Tell my oh, um, she all right? She with Auntie. Hey, you wanna um, listen to Auntie's new song? I'm like, you gonna play that baby all them song them songs you work on Akbar with all them cuss words in it? I was like, dear God in heaven. Um, so yeah, so we push back to the island, shall they all sit down eating all the couples and things, plus Tokyo and Shikana and Carly. Um. So you know they're just chilling or whatever And you know Apparently it wasn't seen Shown on camera but apparently it was Some kind of issues With Shikana and Tokyo not necessarily Liking the cuisine Darling not liking the food Moments Um, And Carly you know She was whispering over to Whomever I think Rashida and Kirk And she was just like I just can't stand people Who's just like you know ungrateful And, and you know I always complain And I was kind of stuff and rude And Carla and Chicago was just like who you talking about uh, Carla who rude friend And Carla was just like y'all kind of rude To these people like I don't like that Carly takes personal offense to it because these are her people over here in Trinidad Um Chicana was just they was just like girl you had to get a passport to come over here just like we did Stop trying to act like you come over here all the time I was like lord the gag um, but that's one of my pet peeves is people being rude to waiters and waitresses. I cannot stand that. Now, if we have, I don't want to say the pleasure because it's, it's not a pleasure, but if we have the, what's the word? If we have the, 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 I, I would say, go ahead and say pleasure. I can't think of nothing else. If we have the pleasure of, Having a rude waitress or a rude waiter, we'll just you know, I just ask for somebody else, etc. Some of my other friends might actually be like, "Oh, you rude as hell. You need to change your attitude." I'm not unless you have to really piss me off for me to give you that energy. Cause I'm just, I come to eat. I ain't come for all this foolishness. I would just kindly ask somebody else, ask for another waiter, or say, you know. um could I possibly see the manager or could you guys be my waiter, etc. You know, I'll try not to take it to that specific level. Um, but I'm trying to think. But Tokyo and Shikana, they kind of like always are, are the kind of people that's like always on go anyway. So you have to like be very... Um, you have to be kind of very specific on what you tell them because they so easily pop off about something. Um, so I guess in a way I understand why Carly didn't necessarily like pull them to the side to talk to them. But I kind of would have said something. I probably would have said something afterwards like to them like um, individually or something if it bothered me that much. Um but yeah, that's that's one of my pet peeves. I cannot stand when people be mean to waiters and waitresses. So I just look at it like we all need a job. We all, you know, these these people job, their livelihood, you know. But at the same time, uh, but but I don't. What I think it was in this situation was they just didn't like, care for the food or whatever. And I guess maybe Carly took it like they were being rude to the people. Um, but yeah, you know, it's a different culture. It's a different. Um, Food, cuisine, whatever. Just enjoy it. Like, but hell, it's Trinidad. It's still black folks. They still, you know, I'm sure the food is bomb. So, you know, we wasn't there, etc. Like I said, they did not show Tokyo and Shikana being rude to the people. They just showed them kind of snare their nose up at the food or whatever. Um, but, you know, hey. Uh, so, you know, Carly made a big deal about that. She kind of got up about the fighter. She was just like, you tripping. You always trying to take over stuff. You need to stop. And, you know, um, I don't know what's wrong with you. This ain't what you want, friend. And, you know, Carly stepped back down because uh, Carly can't fight, child. Uh, so they ended up changing the subject. Um, Scrappy and Bambi, they lost their luggage. Uh, it's one of my worst nightmares, losing my luggage. And, um, you know, they started talking about a sex and all this other kind of and breast milk and moments. Yeah. So um, we have Sierra back in Atlanta. We have Sierra, and she's hanging out with Scrappy. If y'all remember um, a few episodes ago when um, 
Sierra and um, Scrappy, uh, I think the first time they met, when they did the whole, um, you know, event where they was, you know, um, doing people's hair and giving them, going, having them go to the barber shops, etc., or whatever. Um, and so I guess apparently that's when they met then. And, um, you know, I guess Scrap is Sierra's secret admirer. Sierra, run for the hills, girl. This is going to make three damaging relationships. Your ex-husband, um, Brasco, and now Scrappy. Scrappy don't mean nobody no good, child. That man just got out. He is not trying to sit down with no body. Not one person, anyway. Sierra, run for... Sierra with the glam ball honor. Run for the hills, Sierra with the glam ball honor. Run for the hills, Sierra with the glam ball honor. Like, girl, it's just not it. It's going to go down. Arkbar came over. Um, you know, Sierra and Arkbar, they had a conversation. Um, Arkbar already know that this scrap ain't, you know, more than likely not a faithful gentleman. I'll say that in a nice way. And um, so you know, she was just like, "Girl, you you know, I don't you just watch your back or whatever." Sierra ain't trying to hear it right now, so you know that's 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 her. Um, and you know, was just talking about you know possibly getting back cool with the friends and etc. Akbar V in her head, she has no issues with Spice and and Tokyo. Um, it's more so just I think just um. Tokyo and Spice are very reactive people. They're very active. Um, they love to jump over stuff. They love to fight for their friends and etc. And I get it. But if your friends is not in in a, a bodily harm situation, y'all know security on set. Just stop. Like stop. This is not hustle and soul. Child hustle and soul is a mess on We TV. Um, child, they be showing out on now. Um, but. I mean, you know, they used to let y'all fight on love and hip hop. It's it's no longer that way anymore. Like y'all know security on set. Y'all know ain't nobody gonna get beat up that bad, unless they just that quick. Um, but still, it, like I said, it ain't gonna be that bad because they're gonna end up breaking y'all up. Um, so I mean, you know, unless your friend is getting jumped, I don't know why y'all always feel the need to jump up and and you know, like chill out, please. But, you know, um, I just went on a rant. But anyway, uh, Akbar's whole thing is, you know, she don't understand, blah, blah, blah. Akbar, you was wrong because there was di a direct attack towards Tokyo and Spice, especially Tokyo. You know exactly what she was doing. Um, so stop it. Talking about this just battle rap. It is a part of battle rap, but you, that was very targeted rap. Stop it. Ain't nobody stupid. Um, but Akbar V, she just has a bad attitude anyway. Um... I saw recently on Instagram, um, Zoe, um, I am Zoe, he did a, a review, not a review, you know he does those, um, videos where, you know, he's, like, reacting to, you know, whatever, put his, his face and, and whatever it is he's reacting to side by side as if he's, you know, talking to him or whatever, um, and so he did that, and Akbar V, like, she got mad and, and added him and all that, and I'm just like, girl, it's just... Take it as a joke, like, sis. Though, you know, Akbar V, she just already has an attitude problem. But, you know, we've seen that. So, her having an attitude problem, just in general, and, and being petty, on top of Spice and Tokyo, always ready to fight, those two, those different components is just not going to work ever, you know, in terms of them all being friends. So, just let it go, Sierra. Okay, um, let me see, let me see. Yeah, they talking about getting to put the guns down and no guns and all this kind of stuff. And that's, the, the guns got there because of our oppressors. When are we going to speak about that? When are we going to put some of the blame on the people that needs to put the blame on? And that's not us. Like, uh, come on now. You know, but y'all, I mean, we do have some kind of responsibility as black people to keeping this foolish just going. And stop caring about street cred and stop glorifying violence and negativity we do need to do that and stop doing that but are we can we all stick together as one you know are we all not going to exclude certain people you know for for um are you not going to exclude your lgbtqia brothers and sisters 
just because of that. I mean, we all black at the end of the day, right? You know, or are we going to, you know, include everybody? Are we, you know, just going to stick together and not think that we're better than other ones and, uh, and try to truly uplift people instead of putting them down or only hanging around folks for your benefit? And all? It's just a lot. It's a lot to fix on the outside of the community um, to make the inside community better. And it's a lot on the inside community to make the inside community better. So it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. But that's a deep topic for real. It's so funny when somebody died. Oh, we need to stop the violence and all this. But y'all still glorifying the hood. Y'all still participate in the foolishness. Left and right. So, I mean, you can't have it both ways. You can't be all about fighting and, oh, I beat this person up or I'm going to get this person or I shot this person. But then when somebody actually died, now you feel bad. What? Why? What did you think was going to happen? Why are you playing with guns? And you don't think somebody going to shoot it? Girl. Okay. Um. Let me see. Um. Scrappy, Kirk, and... Scrappy Kirk and Jock, they go um, walking, you know, on a little nature trail, playing with the monkeys, scared, you know, um, and, you know, talking and, <sighs> yeah, there wasn't none to that scene, it was just talking. Okay, let me see. We find out that Scrappy and Lil, uh, Scrap Dillion and Shay Mack, they used to be real cool. Um, they recently got back in touch. Um, he was saying that um, used to be Shay Mack used to be his wing man, um, you know, wing woman, whatever. Um, and you know, she used to anytime he wanted to date somebody, he used to run the girls by her and all this kind of stuff. And they used to talk and you know, be cool and. You know, used to help him out with his outfits and all this. A.K.A. Scrap, you wasn't attracted to her. So, she, you put her in the friend category. That's all that is. I'm just like, I would never want to be somebody's wingman. Ever. I am my own. Are you serious? I never want to be somebody's second fiddle. Somebody's tag along. Somebody's background. If I choose to be a background singer... I would choose to be that and I would do that, but no. No, just automatically put in the category of being somebody, being behind somebody. Like if I'm not standing beside you, I don't want to be there. I don't necessarily want to be in front of you either. You know, depending on the situation, unless it's, you know, something that's that's my thing. Um, but I'm never going to stand behind you. Oh, God. No, it's probably why I got many friends now. But no, no, no. I, I, you know, and I guess they ain't see no harm to it. I, I would take offense to that. Me just being saying I'm somebody's wingman, and you know, um, if I was female and saying, oh, this is just my home girl or whatever, you know, like it kind of, you know, and uh, they, you know, it's absolutely possible for a man and a woman to be friends, absolutely. But most of the time. Men only befriend women that they don't want to sleep with. At least it's just what I've seen most of the time. You know, unless obviously that's your family or something. But most of the time, women, men who hang around women, um, and could just and they're just friends and they're legit friends. They're not sexually, romantically attracted to to them in any kind of way, and that's just you know true team. Anyway, going back to this, Shay Mack was also mad um, at, um, which is a legitimate reason. She was also mad at um, Scrap Dillion because Scrap Dillion used to hang around Stevie J. Y'all know Stevie J and Jocelyn had that whole thing going on, and where they kind of came at Shay Mack, and you know she said that kind of damaged her for, for a long time. So, you know. Um, but you know she's good. She's back on her feet now. And look at Stevie J and, and Jocelyn now. You know, look how the tides have turned. Um, so yeah, who knows what Jocelyn's doing? She's just causing foolishness all over the internet as usual. But what is she doing? How is she actually making money, Jocelyn? What is going on? They say Jocelyn even um, Stevie J trying to get uh, custody of Bonnie Bella from Jocelyn allegedly. 
And Jocelyn won't even tell Stevie J where she stay at in Florida. So it's just a whole mess. Shay Mac, you good. You know, God always turn things around for your child. You're doing well. But don't go back to that baby daddy of yours. Mm -mm. Okay, let me see. Let me see. Let's talk about everything. Yeah. Okay, so Mimi, she arrived late, child. She came to sit down. Hey, everybody. Hey, guess what? I didn't come by myself. I brought poo. Here we come poo walking up. I was like, Lord Jesus, what's going on? And, um, you know, Carla, Pooh was just like, she started off kind of nice. She was just like, this is one thing I want to do. One thing I want to simply do is, Carla, I'm just over all this. It's just so petty. It's so tired. It's so through all this kind of stuff. I want to be back cool with you, girl. Remember we used to be cool, girl? Carla was just like, uh-huh. But one thing I need for you to do is clear some things up. Did we sleep together? Did we not sleep together? Pooh was just like, you know, I ain't come here for all that. You know, but did we sleep together? Did we not sleep together? Carly went to go play the thing. Pooh didn't necessarily, you know, care for, you know, the facts or the truth or nothing. So it, you know, instantly they just started going back and forth. It got hype. None of them... A lot of folks in these shows, they have a hard... They don't know how to approach people with certain stuff. They have bad timing. They don't know how to handle certain situations in a way where somebody won't feel offended. They don't know how to do that. It automatically just comes off aggressive and wrong. And people are automatically in defense mode by what you said to them. So, it's just like, y'all need to get y'all approach together. My God. But anyway, um, Pook. Who came there for the for the foolishness? She did. Um, so, Charlie started arguing back and forth, and you know, um, who she got up and demonstrated how Carly's tongue was down there in her lady parts areas and things, and um, all of a sudden she was just like Carly um, pooed on her sheets, child. I was just like, Lord, and she actually threw the sheet. Apparently, that was the sheet that, that Carly, you know, had dropped some loads on. And I was just like, first of all, who keeps the sheets? If if an accident like that did happen, who keeps the who keeps that? You ain't had nothing but bad intentions from the beginning to actually keep it. You was using that because you knew at some point that the show or whatever was going to happen for you and you and you needed a storyline so you was like well let me keep these sheets just so I can throw this back up in her face you had nothing but bad intentions from that cuz who keeps that i mean really if you actually cared about a friend and all that cuz you can't really come back from that embarrassing somebody to that level even though it's a natural thing it's a human thing we all do it whatever it's still like to do that especially and tell people about it and to bring the evidence obviously they didn't give no close up of, of nothing it's probably nothing but putting on the sheet or, or whatever child he started arguing and going back and forth and she bought some depends she was just like oh she bought calling some diapers <laughs> she said to um so you can <laughs> she said so you can take care of them loose ass but <laughs> So then, oh, oh God. <laughs> so then, you know, the security holding her back. Of course, Toke. Toke got to be the muscle. Toke get up. She got to be the, you know, the, the, the one that got the fight for everybody. She get up. Started walking over the pool like she fell in a fight. Of course, security, security. Pooh saying all kind of disrespectful stuff. Talking about her weight. Saying, you know, you need a diabetic pill. All kind of stuff. Child, Pooh ended up walking out. Pooh ended up twirling around like King of Moore. And you know, she ended up telling her to suck it. 
the scene was just complete. It was complete. <laughs> it was foolishness, y'all. It was complete foolishness. But my God, it was so funny. Ooh, child. It was funny. Um, next week gonna be a mess. Pooh have not left the island. Pooh gonna end up talking to some of the ladies that she cool with. And, you know, Pooh gonna stir up some more mess between um, Jock and Kendra. We saw a scene where Jock was pouring water or oil on Pooh's butt. And, you know, that's gonna be an issue with Kendra, Jock's woman. And then um, Scrappy, little Scrappy gonna tell Jock that Kendra told him and I guess whoever else was around that she did not want kids. So Jock gonna feel offended that Kendra don't want kids by him. And which... No, it's not just she don't want kids by you, Jock. She don't want kids by nobody. There's a difference there, sir. Um, but he's personally going to take offense to it. But, Jock, you got enough kids. Hand them out. Either way, if she marry you, she going to be a stepmama. So, I mean, she's going to be around kids anyway. So, I mean, shoot. And maybe, and, and, uh, maybe she just don't want kids. Why do people act like it's something wrong with people who don't want kids? That's their choice. Kids are amazing. Kids are beautiful. Kids are awesome. But it's just not the route that everybody wants to take for their life. And that's okay. That don't mean there's nothing wrong with them, child. You can be fulfilled in, in everything and have everything that you want in life without having kids. You know, that's just not everybody's dream. And, and that's okay. You know, and if it is your dream, great. That's beautiful. That's amazing. But if it's not your dream, that's great. That's beautiful. That's amazing. Just do you. People are just so judgy all the time. It's like, oh, child. But we're going to see how it pans out next week. With this said, I'm Mr. Chilaki. Mr. Chilaki on Google Plus. Follow me at It's Kings World on Instagram and Twitter. At It's Kings World 89 on Snapchat. Chase King on Facebook. Mr. Chilaki on Cash Up and PayPal. Run me my money or run me my fade. Run me my money the way I get paid. Yes. Stay black, stay tuned. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.